Actually, I don't. I'm pretty much making this up as I go along. I have no idea what I'm doing. So, bye-bye, huge pile of code. changing my mind. I liked it better the other way. This is how you know I'm doing this for real, not like live coding where, you know, I'm just copying and pasting in a stuff, a, a bunch of stuff I wrote like a week ago. Nope. You get it as I screw up. to run this to make sure that I've pretty much gotten it back to what it was when I started. Because I might have ruined everything. I'm good at ruining everything. Oh, oh no, the missing semicolon! Or extra parenthesis. Never make it as a Lisp programmer. And waiting for the build to come up now. After I've made my change. And, yeah, sure enough, uh, I have destroyed everything. There's a noticeable lack of actual building cells here. line that actually applies the whole 
Grit Morph to everything. And I'm going to pull it up into here where I set up my All the things and then transform again to get them into spherical warped space. Uh, grid to world trans is the thing that applies the magic, uh, the magic cylinder warp or the grid or just grid scaling or whatever it is. And every building sector has a morph that specifies how its grid works. see a building now as we wait for the build or wait for me to fix my typos stretch the texture across it. We'll probably need to rework that for uh, the buildings that loop around because um, you know we're going to make want to make it so that there's not a seam where they loop. Uh, there is an index buffer but the code to set it up is really really small. Um, that is all of the index buffer code right there. Um, because I've stripped it down to not eliminate duplicate, duplicate vertices and anything fancy. So that's not pretty. I mean, it's... <laughs> well, okay, it is very pretty, but it's not what I intended. Hey, look! That helped! I 
And also, most importantly, you'll see as I'm, you know, just moving this around, like the block is never ever like shooting off into infinity. No weird stretching, nothing like that. It's just going where it's supposed to. So we've solved one of the hardest, most complicated things that we had going. You remember, like, this block right here was just sort of shooting off into space and tearing everywhere, and now it's not. So we get rid of it. Put a block in there because, well, block. Yeah, and we have actually gone backwards pretty far here. Um, like one of, among other things, if I... Uh, now, you can see the wireframe is much, much denser than it was before because all of the, well, if you look up close, like you can see right through here, all of the, you know, there's all these triangles that are just completely inside the building that we're not making any effort to call out, and we're going to have to go back and write that because, well, we like buildings that render quickly, maybe. But... Overall, good news. So, um, so we use Perforce. Uh, a lot of people in the game industry as our version control system. A lot of people, um, a lot of people in the game industry use it because it's really good at swinging around great big binary assets. Um, whereas something like Git is really nice for just handling source code, um, but distributed version control sort of has a problem with uh, just huge binary files where you end up with the full history of all these big binary files stored on everyone's drives and it gets bad. Um, so, uh, but at this point, um, We've moved almost all of our binary stuff to be part of our build and database system. So um, I keep saying someday we're gonna move we're gonna move the source code to Git since we're not putting binaries in source control anymore. Uh, and to answer Zazamalik's question, uh, the uh, can't use the tessellation stage in something similar to NURBS. Uh, we're going in the opposite direction from that, actually. Um, tessellation is when you have a single surface, and you know, then you're able to turn it into a lot of little triangles to smooth it out. Um, what we have here is we're starting with lots of little teeny triangles all over the place, and ultimately our goal is going to be to get rid of some of those so that uh, you know we draw faster. So. The tessellator is good, but we're actually trying to go in the opposite direction. And um, you know, before this is all done, we're probably going to have just a mesh reduction pass that s just smooths everything out a little bit. <laughs> what is it, Shannon? Fix my code. 